Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining the webinar today on editing cityscapes in PaintShop Pro. I'm joined by PaintShop professional George Kurzik, who will be demonstrating how to not only photograph cities, but also explain how to manage moving elements such as traffic and people, and how to correctly edit city lights to create stunning cityscapes. As a special thank you for attending the webinar today, I'd like to offer you an exclusive 35% off the upgrade or purchase of PaintShop Pro 2020 Ultimate for a limited time. You'll receive the coupon code redeem this offer in a follow-up email tomorrow, so keep an eye out for that. Before I pass it over to George, I wanted to remind you this webinar is being recorded and you'll receive a link to watch the recording at your own convenience in that follow-up email you'll receive tomorrow as well. well that takes care of all the um, housekeeping items from me. I'll pass it over to George. Well, good afternoon and hello, everybody. My name is George Kurzik, and uh, I'm here to present to you some uh, some my topic on cityscape photography. I'm gonna I'm gonna take this in a number of different directions. I'd like to, you know, show show the um, way some of the techniques I use for actually doing the photography, and then we'll follow up with uh, image reviews of a number of images that I've taken over the years, and then uh, show you some tricks and tips that I've done with editing, and uh, kind of help you all uh, with 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 Kent. Which, what can be a, a challenging subject. Okay, let's get the slides going here. Anyway, cityscapes, it's the, uh, basically, we're looking for capturing images from different perspectives and uh, ways to illustrate the character of the city, uh, methods that we can have to, under different shooting times under different lighting conditions, under various uh, atmospheric conditions from various perspectives, all sorts of, way, sorts of ways to uh, effectively try and capture a, a cityscape. It's basically the, the, the a landscape, but with lots of buildings in it. Here's our agenda. I'm gonna cover an introduction <clears throat> as we had just a minutes ago and we'll discuss the elements of cityscape photography. Uh, I'll, I'll go over some of the tools and techniques and you know, as I've mentioned earlier we'll we'll do an image review and, and uh, basically I, I'll do a self critique and I'll, and I'll show you the things that I look for when I, when I shoot cityscapes effectively. And then I've got like three or four images, raw images that I'll, I'll process in uh, in PaintShop Pro, uh, basically fixing lighting, uh, perspective control, uh, some other tips and tricks that, I, that I've used over the years. So for techniques in cityscape, there's, there's a number of things that I'm going to cover today. Uh, again, both photographically and in editing mode. For photographing, I want to I discuss a little bit locations and vantage points. Uh, the ways in which you can shoot cities uh, from different locations and from different vantage points to capture different elements of the uh, of the buildings and, and the uh, traffic, if you will. Uh, I want to discuss exposure and exposure for different lighting conditions uh, and and some of the methods that we can use for creating light trails. Uh, and, and capturing motion. And likewise for motion blur and light trails that will all be covered and in some of the ways we can position our, our equipment to capture the uh, light trails created by city traffic. I'll get into perspective correction <clears throat> a little bit in, in our editing phase. Uh, whenever you shoot buildings from the ground level like we've all seen, especially in wide angle, if you're close up, it, it always looks like the buildings are falling over. Uh, the way to take care of that, if you want to spend the many thousands of dollars for a perspective correcting lens, which none of us do, 
or there's a there's some neat little tools that that I use in PaintShop Pro that that kind of kind of fix that. And and briefly talk about noise correction. The second part of cityscape photography, what I what I do want to mention is this is basically a, a subset, or what I like to call as part two, uh, you know, uh, the second half of a, the first movie of of the webinar I conducted a number of months ago on blue hour photography. I, I'm, I'm, I'll confess. I am a when I do cityscape work, I'm always shooting just in the early evening, late afternoon hours. Uh, part of that is the fact that I have to work during the day, but also a lot of that is the fact that I think you get the best colors and the best conditions for shooting, matching, say, city lights and night sky right around sunset to about a half an hour after sunset. So a lot of that I covered in this webinar on blue hour photography. You can find that at the Corel Discovery Center on the webinar section under tutorials. And there in that particular tutorial, I do cover multiple image exposure bracketing, which creates HDRs, long time exposures, and low ISO settings. And, and those can be complicated topics for a number of people, but I cover them in detail in that first webinar. I'll, I'll review them briefly as I discuss them during this uh, discussion. Well, first off, let's talk about locations and vantage points. Finding the right spot, it, it, it's always hard. Uh, and, and, and it depends whether you live in the city and you can just walk around and look for the particular points, or if you have to drive in and find a place to park your car, or and, or in a lot of places, you may not even have to enter the city to get uh, very good cityscapes. But finding the right spots always is a tough one, whether it's ground level or higher. My preference is I like to go to the higher vantage points. Uh, I like to try and get up higher in, in the city where I can try and shoot buildings at eye level or even above eye level. Um, it's it's That takes a little bit of work and sometimes you have to get permissions to, to go some places to try and get to these higher vantage points. Uh, and I list them here on this slide, but I, I've had real good luck at observation decks. Every city has, has uh, an observation deck where you can get a view of the town. And, and a lot of times they will allow tripods uh, so you can shoot uh, with a tripod in these uh, observation decks. If they if they don't allow you to shoot tripod, well then we go to a high ISO and and shoot uh, just handheld. Also, uh, another trick I'm, I'm going to mention when you go to observation decks and and other places that you might be shooting, uh, not just city scapes, but sometimes inside other buildings. If you're shooting through glass, uh, a lot of times uh, you get reflections from the background. Uh, the way to prevent that, especially if you're using a tripod, is to basically, I, I carry a, a, a sweatshirt or, or a dark uh, cloth with me, you know, a 24 by 24 cloth or something that you can just drape over your lens, and that really blocks all reflection in the glass. So it, it, it's a trick, uh, uh, one of the observation decks uh, overseas told me about when I was shooting. They said, "Oh, just 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 put a cloth over it, you know." So so you're kind of making a drape that covers your camera and covers the lens, and you hold the the cloth against the glass, and and that pretty much blocks out all reflections. Um, another spot I like to go to is parking garages. Uh, there's plenty of parking garages that go go up 12, 15, 18 stories. Um, uh, and then you can get to the top of those, uh, you have some, sometimes some really great views of, of the city in, in the immediate area. Again, I've had good luck with that. A lot of restaurants and hotels, uh, they'll let you come in, especially if they have uh, upper floor restaurants. And you know, with permission, they will allow you to, to uh, use their facilities to take a shot or two from from their from their facility, 
uh, other buildings if you can find them and if you get permission. I've, I've done that as well, where I've seen a spot that I wanted to, to, to use as a vantage point and I've asked permission and, and most time you'll get it. A couple other things, and we'll cover these in, in the photos that we cover in a little bit, is the use of water. I like to use bodies of water, whether it's rivers, lakes, that create reflections of the city. Again, at that point, you have to, of course, use a lower vantage point. And I also like to use bridges for leading lines. I think bridges uh, are, are definitely the combination of art and uh, science, and, and they make some, for some great images. Uh, depending on the background you can get with the city. One of the things I is is a, a tool I, I can't live without, and that's Google Maps. Whenever I want to go shooting, and, and a lot of the images you'll see today are in Philadelphia because that's where I work, uh, is Google Maps I, I, or whatever mapping software you can find. I like to check, I like to do overhead views. If I know there's something I want to shoot, like here is City Hall in the lower part of this image, uh, you'll see that uh, I'll be looking around for a place that I, I can capture this from. Now here I, I went to the north side of the uh, City Hall. And then what I'll then do is I'll use uh, 3D maps or, or Street View, or sometimes I'll go 3D if I want to get on top of the buildings. And I'll get the uh, image view that I'm kind of looking for and, and see if it's got potential. Ultimately, this one worked because I the final image you know turned out reasonably well, particularly again in the e early evening hours, where I was able to get, the, of course, the lighting I want, and of course the uh, tower with the lit clock. So, uh, just just briefly, uh, I again I like to save myself a lot of walking, a lot of driving. Uh, I do all my uh, reconnoitering with with either Google Maps or, or some other software, and, and and again try and use the 3D view. Really very helpful. Okay, let's talk about working with light trails. <clears throat> light trails suggest uh, motion, and they create very beautiful colors. Again, this is this one I'm showing here. I shot from the top of a parking garage. They require the longer exposures, uh, depending on the speed of traffic. So if you have traffic that's kind of crawling around wherever you're you're shooting from, uh, you would need to have a tripod and set for longer exposures. And when I mean by longer exposures, in the 15 to 20, 30 second range. If you're shooting in the daytime, that might require you to go to a very low ISO or use a, what's called a neutral density filter, which I have done uh, for daytime shots. Uh, the also advantage of the longer exposures is if you're shooting on city streets, uh, you'll find that uh, the people tend to disappear because since they're moving and you're shooting a long exposure, they will not be staying anywhere long enough to really get exposed in your image. Uh, but anyway, the um, back to the light trails, you get interesting geometries, it gives you good leading lines, it, it, it really creates interest in, and adds anchoring to the picture. But the one thing with a lot of these leading lines, you, you've got to be careful that you need to balance the brightness of the light trails with the darkness of the shooting cone. If you shot this image that I have here in the middle of the night, you wouldn't see any of the sky. The building, you probably wouldn't see the building outline lines. You'd see the lights and you'd probably get some leading, some of the trails, but that's probably all you'd see. You wouldn't get all the definition in the image that you would have. So again, I try and balance between what I'm getting with the, with the light trails with the overall ambient light that I see in the, uh, in the sky. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna have to, if I end up shooting to, to expose for the sky, the light trails will be overexposed. If I expose for the light trails, the sky will be completely black. So these actually are very closely balanced. And that, that's, it, that's something to chew on, and I'll cover that when we do some editing as well. Again, along with light trails, we're, we're working with motion. 
Well, again, longer exposures eliminate the people in motion, but they also create lighting effects in the early evening hours, particularly, or even daylight hours, if you can get a long enough exposure. I always like to have moving clouds. I think that accents the buildings in a city. Uh, that gives a, a, really a, a, a dynamic sense to the picture, uh, a little more impact, if you will. Although, I even if I have to shoot with still clouds, I still prefer clouds to give texture to the sky. So it's, but uh, for me, I like to try and get the motion of vehicles and clouds, and it really creates a, 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 an image that pops, if you will. Weather, don't let any weather stop you. Best shots are, I think, in the rain, the fog, the snow. This is shot during a snowstorm. Uh, uh, you don't see the individual flakes, but it created a, 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 a very dimensional image where the background faded out, very strong foreground, uh, a very um, uh, eerie feeling, if you will. So weather, uh, I don't let weather stop me unless the car doesn't get through it. Perspective correction. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of times it's hard to shoot on the ground level and still correct for the buildings because the buildings tend to lean over, especially through shooting in a wide angle. When shooting from the ground, hours, especially closer up, you're going to get that fallback. Um, in PaintShop Pro, they have the geometric effects tool uh, for vertical correction that helps a great deal with uh, the amount of fallback. And, and I'll be I'll walk through some images as I edit them and, and take you through that. At this point, what I want to do is I'm going to review a number of images. And again, this is to help stimulate you in, in, and to give you some ideas of maybe something you might want to shoot for uh, that will give you a, a perspective of my work and the kind of thing I, I prefer that I shoot for when, I, when I'm out and about. And now I've had the good fortune of being able to travel worldwide for my, for my job. So I've been able to uh, capture a number of images in different places. Again, before I leave the country, sometimes I go to Google Maps and I'm, and I'm always searching. Let's go through them real quick. And there's about 20 images, but I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on them. So I don't, wanna, I don't wanna bore you with all of this too much. But the first thing I'm gonna get into, and for the, as with any image you shoot, you know, the basic compositional tips, the rule of thirds, uh, which basically states you wanna try and get your main subject off the center. Again, give yourself breathing room on all sides. Here, I have the sky in the upper third, I have the, power here in, in first third. Again, it creates a, a sort of balance uh, in the image. I'm always looking for leading lines here. The, the traffic that goes in here in, in this in this land and cityscape gives us good leading lines. A lot of texture going on in this image between the, the buildings and the streets. And of course, anchoring. You know, they, uh, anchoring is usually a foreground subject that kind of anchors the landscapes. Uh, we'll see a few of those as I go along. But <clears throat> each one of these photos you're going to see, uh, as I mentioned, I have a good vantage point here. I found a bridge going over the, the Schuylkill River. This is south of Philadelphia, very wide angle. Almost all my work is in the 16 millimeter range, uh, sometimes uh, up to 20, 24 at the max. Uh, but strong sky, great reflections. Uh, when you go long exposure, the movement in the water tends to be dampened out as well. And I got some good cloud movement here. You know, this is during a rainstorm, actually. I, had, I was shooting with an umbrella. <clears throat> Again, another good vantage point. This is a, a bridge that's on the north side of Philadelphia. Very lucky that I had good good skies, great, great lighting, quite by accident. Again, strong reflections in the water. And this gives this almost this anchors your photograph, gives great leading lines all the way across, which shows you the main downtown area. Uh, you almost 
you know, unfortunately in this image, you almost don't see the downtown because the sky dominates so much. And here I violated the rule of thirds because I just did not want to give up on any part of the sky. Now this was shot extreme telephoto. Not every shot has to be wide angle, as I mentioned, so I broke my own rule, but I went with a very high vantage point from the baseball stadium, a good three miles away from, from where this image was, a long telephoto. I, I have, in this case, I happened to be in the, in the stadium. I was gonna shoot uh, fish eye and wide angle shots of, of the inside of the stadium. And a storm came up, so I grabbed my telephoto and ran as high as I could and to shoot back to back to the city and capture this image as the storm came in. Again, more foul weather. Always looking for fog, misting rain. Here we have strong anchoring with a good foreground image that leads right up to the city. The city is almost a background to this. Again, the long exposure I use here smooths out the water, gives it a very ethereal feel. Um, this is the kind of thing I'm looking for. I'm always looking for strong angles, leading lines suggested here. Uh, gives us, gives us a, a, a very calming image. <clears throat> Again, also here from the south side of Philadelphia, strong light trails. Uh, here I found myself on an overpass uh, set up uh, basically to capture uh, traffic along next to the river here, again in the downtown area. Very strong lines, runs you right into the picture, creates a lot of interest. As I mentioned earlier, I like getting back to the water and the bridges. This is Pittsburgh. Uh, the water is very calm, uh, makes for very strong reflections, very strong image. Long exposure gave me motion in the clouds, created a good background. Uh, again, a lot of times when, when you shoot these kind of images, uh, if the wind is not up, it makes it a lot better to get these kind of reflections. The long exposure helps, but uh, a very calm day also puts very little motion on the surface of the water, uh, depending where you are, and we can really get really good reflections, uh, particularly when the lights start coming on in the buildings. Um, here we have an image uh, shot with multiple points in the curious I was after the full moon and I got it. But Unfortunately, I, I was able to uh, take this uh, from a hotel. The hotel gave me permission to go up to their top, top floor restaurant and I set up there and was able to shoot down on the main uh, part of Dubai, capture the board tower as well as the moon, a little bit of uh, paint shop pro work on to really balance the moon with the, with the rest of the image, but it all worked. Uh, there, everything's going well for this image. Here, uh, I'm shooting the city, but I'm really just using that as a background. You know, one thing you can do in your images, if you see an interesting subject, you just put the city in the back to make it basically the wallpaper, if you will. Here, I was shooting this, this sculpture in a park. Again, I liked all the long leading lines that came from the walls around it. Uh, at the right time, it, and again, right at uh, after sunset, and let the uh, buildings just, uh, you know, be there as, as just an interesting object in the background. Neon, love neon, and 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 really, I should be shooting should be shooting more neon. One, I always I always uh, can, if I can find something interesting like here, this is the Reading Terminal Market in Philly. Uh, the neon sign by itself is interesting, but I wanted to shoot longer exposure to create interest. Again, I let traffic go by while I was shooting. These highlights are created by buses, if you will. They, they create a, a much higher uh, light streak as opposed to the uh, headlights of cars down here. But it, again, very strong angles. Uh, those rule from left to right, 
um, made for an interesting image. But that's that's the kind of thing. Again, I tried to put it off center, give give the eye somewhere to travel and rest. This is a two subject shot. Again, probably shot a little later than now, I would prefer, I would like to do it later. This also is done in uh, kind of rainy weather. It didn't have any clouds for uh, more overcast, but it, but it worked. I was able to get the Brooklyn Bridge and of course, uh, uh, lower Manhattan in the background. Uh, two subjects, oh, excuse me, go back to that one. Uh, again, had to watch the lighting because this is starting, okay, this almost blew out here. Uh, the uh, the buildings in the background, you have to watch, and especially when you start getting really darker skies, things might start blowing out in some of the well-lit buildings. So that's just something I had to kind of be careful of. I lose, this, I darkened up in, uh, in paint shop pro. A good vantage point here, shooting the uh, Dubai. Had to do, I had to uh, do some perspective correction on this one because they were leaning over after I shot it. Good reflections in the water. Water was very, very rough, and uh, this is a this is almost a minute and a half of exposure over five exposures bracketed to try and get even reflections here. So again, uh, when you see these images with very good reflections, uh, always going with longer exposures on a tripod. Uh, again. Uh, another hotel shot. I climbed up uh, in, in uh, uh, Marriott, which was kind enough to let me go up to their top floor, and, and I shot uh, Riyadh. Uh, again, the lines, the tower, sunset was just setting. It, it uh, gave me a good opportunity to get str a good, strong sky sunset with these city shots. Uh, Dubai. This is shot from inside the building looking down. I uh, don't get a chance to do too many of these, but if you, for you travelers out there, I take advantage every time I'm in a tall building if I can try and get these kind of shots. It all kind of works because really the main subject becomes the marina. The buildings just kind of surround and lead you there. I uh, saw the shot earlier. Again, this is uh, ground level. Again, the foul weather. It was snowing, but it created a nice white here. Uh, I would have even liked to have seen it a little deeper, but the uh, right at the right time. So just as they turn on the light and the clock, and capture these uh, these lines, the the traffic, uh, to really create interest and in, and force you right into the main subject, which is your city hall. Uh, not all shots have to be from, uh, this is a straight up shot right uh, from across Manhattan from the Jersey side. Just good lighting. It was right at sunset with sun behind my back, you know, creating a nice red glow in the buildings, uh, adding a long exposure to get the cloud moving. So not all shots have to be wide angle in the town. We, we can go from a distance, saving you some driving in the city. Same here, uh, shooting across the East River. Uh, in town, uh, buildings don't necessarily have to be the subject. Holidays are always a good good time to capture a lot of nice lighting, you know, trees that are decorated, a lot of Christmas lights that are out in the streets. Uh, again, I always try and shoot for the um, uh, light trails, uh, whether it works or not in this picture, that's I'll let you decide. Again, uh, overlooks, vantage points. This is, you don't have to necessarily go in town. This is from the uh, south side of Pittsburgh, uh, up on Mount Washington. A lot of good vantage points can be found around these towns. Again, strong lighting, strong movement. I think I'm almost done with these images. We'll, do, we'll wrap it up in a second and we'll do some editing. Here we are on the uh, ground level. And I think I probably, I think you've got the idea that I'd like these light trails, shot long exposure, uh, the higher ones caught by the London buses, and of course, ground traffic. 
again, getting a little darker in the sky. I'm starting to lose a lot here, but it all still worked because of the, the strong light trends. Uh, I put this in here because it's a great parking garage shot. Uh, the uh, city hall is off to the left, which we don't get in this image. We got a couple of towers and we got, again, what I like is the, uh, the angle of these uh, light trails here in the lower right and on the right hand side uh, creates, creates some interest. And uh, I put this in here just for fun. Uh, for all you daring souls out there who decide to go into infrared photography, email me, you know, you know, you know, and I'll talk to you. Uh, very challenging, but it also creates very interesting images. If you, a lot of people are turned off by these colors. I think they're very interesting. Again, a little bit off the spectrum. So, and and once you get the right white balance, uh, you know, I edit these in Paint Shop Pro like anything else. Anyway, let's do some editing. I, I've got a number of images we can walk through and, uh, and get into. So what I'm gonna switch over here now to my PaintShop Pro screen. And uh, these are my raw images before I've done anything. And now I'm not gonna do a, fi a complete final edit. We don't really have the time for that. But I'll walk through a number of images. I've got this one city scene with, with the light trails. I've shot at City Hall in Philadelphia. I've also got that one you saw earlier uh, I'll, I'll edit this photo of the uh, of the light trails we did in Philadelphia. I also have that Dubai shot. We got a little bit of lean in this building, so I'll walk you through how we can do perspective control. So a number of different shots. So let's start with this one here. Uh, it you'll see there's a number of things going on. I've got I've got lights. I've got uh, sensor spots in here. You know, if I zoom in, you see I got spots on my sensor. When I do HDR work. Spent, these spots always turn out. So what I, one of my favorite tools to use is I use the scratch remover. Um, and in this case, I'm gonna use about you know, 200 to start. We'll get rid of this big ugly spot right here. And we'll just do a scratch remover. That, that takes care of that. Now, scratch remover basically averages, you'll see a, a box with two brackets on the sides. It basically averages out what it detects on the two sides and then just wipes out the spots. It gets rid of all those sensor spots. Um, I use it to get rid of telephone wires. I'll even take out lamp posts, this kind of thing in my image. You know, this one, I don't particularly care for light, so I make it go away. So now I'll just kind of zip that out. And I'm just doing this for play just to show you what that tool is capable of. Uh, you can set it for different widths. I don't like this thing sticking the corner of a building sticking in my image. I'll get rid of that. So there we have that so far. Now, what I'm going to do is see how badly this building, uh, the, the town hall is leaning in. Again, this is a shot at a very hard wide angle because I wanted these light trails. So I'm going to do a perspective correction. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to go to effects on my menu. Up here in the edit menu, I'm in effects. Then I'm going to walk down. I'm going to go to geometric effects. I'm going to move over and I'm going to look for perspective vertical. So when you're ever correcting for buildings upright, you want to go to effects, geometric effects, perspective vertical. Click on that. And let that work a second. Now see how it's formed a slight trapezoid already, and that's had a 5% distortion. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to correct it to 10. I'm going to move that up to 10. Make that work. Now it doesn't make things perfectly straight, but it certainly improves them a great deal. Um, here's what it looks like before, and that's what it looks like now. Again, not perfect straight, but a lot better. I could go higher than 10, I can go up to 15, but at that point, when I do go to 15, I start losing a lot of the image on the bottom. Now it takes, it's almost perfectly getting very, very straight, but then the bottom, I'm losing the bottom and I'm gonna lose some of this that I don't want to. So I'm gonna compromise and go to a 10. Okay, well now I got this here. So what do I do next? I'm gonna to have to crop it. Here I have a cropping tool. 
and we're going to find the place where we can basically capture that image. And sometimes what I like to do, again, I want to get a lot of that on the bottom. I'm going to keep that, but I'm going to clone in some of the image back. So I'll find the sweet spot here. I want to try and keep as much of the bottom as I can. I don't want to, I want to give some head space here to the to Ben Franklin here on City Hall. And I think that looks pretty good for a prop. So we'll go ahead and take that. But now I got this here on the side. What do I do? We're going to use the cloning tool. So I'm going to go here and clone. Uh, do that in a second. Uh, 200 is a good size. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And, and I'm going to get rid of this. What do I do? One thing with the new Paint Shop Pro, it has this preview so you can kind of see where you're going. So you have a straight clone. Like that. So we kind of bring that across. I'll bring that across and work my way up right there. I uh, made that all go away. Same here. Now when I get to the light trails, I'm going to correct my angle a little bit so I, it matches the direction of the trail heading. Again, just like this. Just like that. And now I've finished. Now I've got a complete image again. But there's still a lot of work to do. So I, I think this building's a little dark. Well, how do I fix dark? I'm going to use my picking tool. I'm going to highlight the top of the building. Just like this. And, and I'll go over that tool again so you see which one I clicked on. I did it rather quickly. I'm going to try and pick the, the dark part of the building like that. And then I go into adjust. Brightness and contrast. And a neat little feature here is called fill light clarity. Okay. I have it set for 40. That's usually my sweet spot. Sometimes I'll go up to 50, maybe even higher in how dark image I have. But let's let's go with 50. Okay, we've lightened this up now. It, it kind of Makes it stand out a little more. I'm going to unselect that, select none. All right, so that's up. Now, I want to I want to even do something with these light trails because I don't have them going across here as much as I'd like. So I'm going to go back to my cloning tool. Here's where I cheat a little bit. I'm going to clone it. Uh, I'm going to go back to a hundred on size. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to click a part of the trail that I have that I'd like to carry further. And this takes a lot of practice because you want to try and get it as straight as you can. It's a little bit of work, but the result is very, very nice. Uh, slide four. There. I've carried my light trail across. And I'm going to do that in a couple other places here, actually. Um, I'm going to go back to 200. And I'm going to bring this trail across. And again, I'm going to try and find that straight spot. And I'm not going to work too long on these because they do take a while. Just like that. Okay, now I've really zipped up this foreground. Now, the only thing when you're cloning, sometimes you see where you get this duplicated repeat pattern. Well, to get rid of that, I go into Scratch Remover. I'll set for the max width I know is available, 500. And I'm going to walk across Scratch Removing. It basically duplicates the image. Oops. Let's fix that. But it gets rid of a lot of that repeating pattern you see in there. It smooths things out. This takes a little bit of work. Again, I'll spend some time on these, but you notice how that's kind of getting rid of those black spots. Smoothing it out. And we get rid of these down here as well. OK, 
again, using my scratcher movement. Easy. And just follow the same axis as the trail or any linear line nearby. And there I smooth that out. And so we've enhanced that photograph, created a little bit more foreground interest, lightened up the building. Uh, I could, if we had more time, I would take my scratch remover, I'd remove a lot of other noise I see in here. And that's basically how I finish up the image. I'll probably add a little more brightness and contrast to it. Kind of zip it up. Let's lighten that up a little bit. Basic lightness, contrast, a little more contrast, a little more brightness. And there you have it. Again, I've played with the light trails a little bit. I've straightened out the building. Here I have to clone that little object out here. That's some sky that brightened that I don't want. I'll get rid of some other of these objects that I don't want in here. But that's basically how you use uh, perspective control through effects, geometric effects, perspective vertical, and I also use uh, the lightness brightness under fill light clarity that puts a nice little fill light in certain areas that are dark, selective. And I also cloned in some, some of the light trails. Let's, uh, let's go to another picture here that I can show you to do some uh, perspective correction. Here's an example of Toka down in, in a marina. These buildings are leaning very badly, as we can see. Uh, well, I'd like to show you again, I'll do the same thing here. Effects, geometric effects, perspective vertical. And I think I have a preset for 10 from previously. Look how it straightens those right out. Does a really nice job. So let's hit OK to that. Crop it. In this case, I don't care so much for the side. I don't need that as much. But I can always clone it in if I have to. And there you have, basically, I've straightened out the buildings now. Uh, in this case, I would probably clone out this crane. And that annoys me. I think I'll do that real quick. I use a scratch removal in this case. Uh, I'll set it for 100. And I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that. There's a crane. What I'll do is I, I use the scratch remover because I treat everything like a scratch, and that'll just get rid of it for me. You can do this in a lot of your city pictures, both with daylight and nighttime shots. It does replicate the size of the buildings. And now I've got a crane out. I'm going to do one other trick here, brightness contract. So I like to put in a little local tone mapping. That, that really enhances the contrast in different ways, especially for night imagery. I don't think we want to go as strong as 10, but here's before and here's after. Again, it strengthens, strengthens the picture. And that's just a little local tone mapping. And there you have it. Again, there's probably artifacts I need to clone out and uh, use my scratch remover, but for this, for this exercise, it's a good, it, it pretty much illustrates what I, what I do for perspective correction. Uh, same here. Uh, I was trying to capture the mosque against these buildings. Unfortunately, I didn't have good skies, but really bad lean. I'll do the same thing very quickly. Effects, geometric effects, perspective vertical. And always got to be a little careful so I don't lose whatever I have down here. Again, not quite the, not quite perfectly straight, but a drastic, a dramatic improvement. So there, we, we crop it, and yeah. So I'm still able to keep the mosque. I keep the, the main hotel. I, you know what? Uh, let's go back a second and try it at 15. Let's back it up. I want to just try it at a very, very dramatic correction. Let's we'll see what we get. Fifteen on this one. Okay. Let's go 
Okay. The only thing we always got to be a little careful of, it does give, give you a little bit of stretching, which generally is a noticeable, but I don't want to carry it too far. That's a much better straighten than I had previously. So if I uh, go ahead and crop that, I'll just take a loop, take it a little down, a little further down, and there you go. So that's pretty darn straight. I mean, a little bit of a lean, but it's tolerable. It's not painful to the eye. Uh, let's see here. Let's turn off that. I think um, this one is the one I shot in the harbor to buy. Uh, first thing I would do is, again, one quick straighten on it. This doesn't require quite as much. But I want to show you how I kind of tend to hem up some of these uh, evening shots. I'll just do a five on this one. Yeah, that's fine. Crop it. Again, okay, capturing even reflections. Expand it a little bit. I want a little foreground in there. Like that. Now, uh, what I, it's still a little flat to me. So, what I'm going to do is I will go in. I'd like to put a little contrast in there. So, adjust. I'll either use brightness contrast straight away, or like I mentioned earlier, I like to do a local tone map, no more than five or 10 because then it gets true pronounced. Uh, I'll give you an example. If I went crazy with this thing, you get a lot of haloing. It, it, it's almost kind of eerie looking. So, but five to 10 on a lot of these, is, it will work quite well. So let's just go about eight. Um, there, it's not too pronounced. And I think it adds a nice effect to it without getting too crazy. And, and I'm gonna put a little brightness contrast in there as well. Uh, just uh, bring down the brightness a little bit. About 12 to 15% contrast. And there I have pretty much a finished cityscape. Again, really, again, I'll have to take out these uh, sensor spots later, but that kind of gives you an accent of the building. And just to show you where we are now versus where we were, you know, I'll just back it up, back it up. Again, started with a good picture, but just, just needed something to bring out those buildings. You know, a little bit of uh, tone mapping, a little bit of contrast. And there you have it. Now it's a standout. Okay, well, I think I'm going to, we're, we're gradually running out of time, so I'll make this quick on this image here. <clears throat> uh, this was a straight, uh, this doesn't need any perspective correction, but it does need uh, some darkening, I think, because the, the sky is just a little bright. So I'm going to go brightness contrast, uh, reduce the contrast a little bit, and go negative on the brightness. I want to, I want to bring down that sky. And I also want to have the, the light trails be a little darker as well. So just 10% contrast. And just to bring that out. Again, a lot of times I'll clone along these light trails to try and, and bring more of them out. Here, I'll, I'll show you one real quick. Again, I'll go to the clone tool. I will go to, uh, say, 100 um, width. Like this part right here looks uh, kind of ratty looking. Let me go to 200. I'll pick right about here and get a good alignment. And how good I got it there, I did not. There we go. And run it right down. Picks out that, har that harsh spot. And I'm going to clean up this orange that's in here, but I brought a nice clean light trail down. I can also get rid of this hot spot right here. Creates a nice clean image. Again, don't be afraid to use the cloning tool to really accent some of the areas that you want to bring out. Anyway, in, let me summarize. Effectively, when we, uh, and really the way I'll do that, 
Let me go back to our introduction, if you will. Again, everything depends on finding a nice spot, looking for the spots that create interest, looking for angles. Uh, buildings create so many natural angles uh, that can help you give you leading lines. Watch your exposure for different lighting conditions. Again, uh, if you're shooting in the daytime, try not to get too bright a sky because you'll end up having uh, very bright skies against very dark buildings. And same thing in night, in reverse. <clears throat> I always like to try and shoot where there's even lighting. Uh, cloudy days work best because you'll get a nice diffuse lighting in the city and you'll also have skies to create interest. I always look for the motion blur and light trails if I'm shooting in the evening. Motion, and if you do not like to have too many people in your pictures, go for the long exposures on a tripod and they will disappear. Again, I talked to you a little bit about perspective correction. Very handy tool. It's, it, it definitely will work not only for big city buildings, but when you shoot your house. I, I could have covered noise correction a little more. I typically don't shoot at very high ISOs, but if you do shoot at ISOs of 3200 or 6400, uh, PaintShop Pro does have a little uh, tool in here called Adjust. I, I use this oftentimes when I'm, when I'm using, uh, when I'm shooting wildlife and I'm shooting at very high SO, it's called Digital Noise Removal. Adjust, Digital Noise Removal. removal. And there it will pretty much automatically reduce a bunch of the, the granular noise you get with high ISOs. So uh, I'm only covering that very briefly but here's the before and after. It does take out some of the noise that you're getting some your images. Anyway, that's pretty much my, my little display, if you will, of, of, of cityscapes. Again, as I, I mentioned earlier, I, I'm always tending towards the evening hours because <clears throat> I love the lighting in the buildings, especially when I get a good sky going. And it, it just, you can shoot inside the cities and shoot outside the cities. Uh, look for the good places where you can park, be safe, uh, and, and get a good spot where you can where, uh, get the vantage point where, where you can put everything in perspective. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it back to Curly. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to e email me and you can also see my images on Flickr. Thanks so much, George. That was really an excellent presentation. Um, and thanks uh, to everyone for listening in and for your attendance today. Just a quick reminder to watch out for a follow-up email you'll receive tomorrow, which includes a link to watch the recording of the webinar, as well as a 35% off discount to purchase or upgrade to PaintShop Pro 2020 Ultimate. Thanks again, everyone. See you next time.